This is YG TV and YG Workshop, presented by First Federal Bank and sponsored by Circle Electric and Health Payment Systems. I'm your host, David Bellman, president of Bellman Homes. Today, my team and I are collaborating to help Kevin Redlick of Brew City PC. Let's meet the panel. I'm David Bellman, president of Bellman Homes and one of the founders of the Young Guns Movement. I'm Ariel Kopak, mindset coach, founder of Harness Your Hindrance. I'm Lori Hybe, CEO of Keystone Click, a strategic digital marketing agency. I'm Mervyn Bird. I'm a Vistage chair and executive coach. Welcome to First Federal Bank of Wisconsin. Here at the bank, we pride ourselves on providing the community bank difference. To us, it's more than a tagline. It's how we serve our customers and support our communities. When you work with us, you can expect quick local decision making, a great customer experience, and a significant community commitment. As experts in the products and services we provide, we are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Proudly serving the Milwaukee metropolitan area since 1922, we look forward to serving you and showing you what the community bank difference is all about. Circle Electric is a 35-year commercial, industrial, and healthcare electrical contractor with engineers and designers on staff, backed by the most technical and well-trained master and journeyman electricians. Whether it's an equipment move, new building, or commercial remodel, from pre-construction all the way through startup, primary power, branch power, or low voltage systems, they are here to support you. Our 24-7 on-call service department is here to meet your electrical needs for our industrial and healthcare customers. You always hear safety first. They are safety always. Circle Electric will maintain electrical reliability for business continuity. For more than 80% of families, today's medical billing practices are confusing. At HPS, our goal is to improve the healthcare experience for the patient by making medical bill payments less stressful. In Wisconsin, that's all made possible by our comprehensive independent healthcare provider network. We simplify billing and lower costs for everyone involved in healthcare and offer various ways for individuals to pay without breaking the bank. Today we welcome Kevin Redlick, Client Solution Manager for Brew City PC. Welcome to YG Workshop, Kevin. Thank you very much, David. Really appreciate you having me today. Uh, really looking forward to getting to know the panel and um, being able to explain a little bit about what we do for uh, the local market when it comes to IT services and solutions. Okay, so tell me a little bit about Brew City PC. Um, how did you first start and then what makes you guys different from you know, other computer and IT firms? Sure. So my involvement actually began almost three years ago today. Uh, I was actually a customer of Brew City PC. I had hired uh, Kevin and his technician at the time, which it was party of two back then. And right, um, there's two Kevins, right? Yes, so you're one half right. of the Kevins. That's, that's correct. So that'll, we'll, we'll, we'll get through that. Um, he can be K1, I'll be K2. How's okay, that? there we go. Okay. So, so Kevin Brendel uh, is the owner and uh, president of Brew City PC. Uh, him and I go back uh, to being friends in first grade. So we've uh, shared a lot of life experience together, uh, became very close friends, and um, I had hired him to do some of my own personal uh, IT computer support, as well as some audio video in my home theater. And I was so impressed with uh, the way that they presented themselves, how they solved my problems, and also just the way that they um, explained everything. And they also left me with a smile on my face and just understanding things. So fast forward a couple of years after that, and um, Kevin and I had talked and said, look, where, where's Bruce City PC? Um, where can we grow? So uh, we decided that it would be a lot of fun to be able to work together instead of just hang out. 
Um, but we've been able to keep, our, uh, keep each other entertained. We've been able to um, find some really amazing opportunities to be able to grow the company and grow our, our capabilities all at the same time. Um, and Brew City PC is, uh, is an entity that's been around for almost 11 years. And we, um, we've serviced, serviced the local market in a multitude of ways um, to be able to help explain IT in a very plain way and uh, be able to offer a lot of solutions the way that some other segments or industries would, would present their products and services. So um, that's a nice story of like how you kind of came together as friends and then uh, you know, end up working together. And I think that's really cool how you kind of you know, you know, grew into the company as, you know, through the friendship. Um, so specifically for Bruce City PC, what, what really makes you guys different? Sure. What, what, what sets you apart from, say, uh, you know, any other computer company in the area? Right. So Bruce City PC started out as a break-fix company for computers and, and some other forms of technology. Uh, it's slowly evolved into um, customers reaching out to us saying, can you do this or can you do that? So we started expanding our services and our solutions. Uh, Kevin also received his master's degree from Marquette in IT um, over that time period. And we slowly but surely added, added some of our solutions. So what sets us apart is um, we're a full service company. We start out uh, just being an outsourced IT department for small businesses, or we can co-manage with larger businesses um, if they find themselves overwhelmed. Uh, so the traditional side is what everybody else does. The, the non-traditional is where we can be your procurement department. We can source the equipment. We can set it up. We can, um, we can train. We can manage. And then we can look at the life cycle and when you're due for an upgrade or a replacement. Um, Beyond that, we've expanded our, our solutions into telecom, into security, surveillance, audio video, um, and that really can be a game changer when it comes to being one phone call away than having to deal with three, four, even five different vendors. Sure, so you've kind of adapted your business based on the needs of your clients Correct. over the years. Okay. And without, without our clients, we would probably be stuck. So sure. with, their, with their insight and their direction, it really helps. Okay, so I think I've got a good general picture of your business, but you're here for a reason. You're here to, to get some advice. So we've got some smart panelists here yes. that, uh, that know their stuff. So what, what's, uh, what's keeping you guys up at night? What is really uh, at the heart of uh, something you'd like to improve on at Bruce City PC? So when you reach out to me, um, we, we kind of had a little bit of a, of a cold sweat trying to figure that out because as you know, like technology can be a really frustrating thing. So we, we are, um, we're privy to a lot of challenges. Uh, but internally, what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to scale up. We're trying to expand in, in how, and how we do that. So I would say our current challenge is actually migrating from being an IT company that's focused primarily on project work uh, to migrating then over to a true managed service provider, uh, an MSP as the industry calls us. Um, with packages that broaden our client base and also grow our opportunity for reoccurring revenue. So it's obviously to remove the sleepless nights, it's to create that base to be able to be comfortable and then allocate those, um, those extra revenues um, where we can, we can then reinvest sure. in the infrastructure. So, so one of the things we talked about, I wanna make sure that I'm on the same page with the question. So you you'd kind of expressed a concern as well about having, um, you know, do you staff up to right. get these bigger clients, or do you, you know, uh, work on, um, you know, uh, you know, getting the clients first and then adding the staff? Is that right. kind of part of that question still? Or yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, okay. It's uh, as you explained. So kind of how to scale up properly is what right. you're looking at. Absolutely. Okay. It's uh, wh whether you you find the client and then you uh, onboard staffing, uh, or you onboard staffing with hopes that you end up at, uh, landing the client. Okay. Um, it's it's a it's a challenge that, that we're, we're taking on currently. Um, and we wanna just figure out how we can take almost that agency approach. So I'm excited to hear what Lori has to say um, and see how, how you're able to offer these solutions um, as kind of a retainer package. Okay, perfect. Well, before we answer your question, uh, we've got some smart people here, and they have uh, probably some questions of their own to learn a little bit more about your business and how you operate. Uh, so I'll turn it over to you guys. Who wants to start? 
Robert, okay, you got the floor. Kevin, give us an idea of what your client base looks like now and what the ideal client would be. Sure. Um, our clients stem from probably one to 10 or 12 users. Uh, so it's office personnel, um, small office environment. Uh, that would be what we're currently at. Uh, we provide a variety of outsourced IT functions for, for those business styles. Um, in terms of the types of businesses or industries that we're involved in, uh, we work with the healthcare industry. Uh, we work within um, entertainment and hospitality. We work with uh, other professional services, such as um, marketing agencies and, and market ser marketing service providers. We work with accountants, financial service rep representatives, insurance companies, attorneys, uh, so a lot of professional services. But we've also started to dip, dip our, um, ourselves into the um, manufacturing production arena, as that area has grown quite a bit. Um, and then what we're looking to do is we would like to scale up so we could, we could grow to be able to service a business that probably has north of 25, 30 uh, users or clients as we call them, manage all of their devices in IT. Okay, good so question. So you would, you would like the majority of your clients to fit into that 25, 30 and up. And when you say up, what's up? Oh, sorry, 25 to 30 would probably be a cap. Okay. Um, so uh, that would be, that would probably be doubling our, uh, our current average customer in terms of scale or size. Okay, so kind of to clarify right now, you're really dealing with small businesses, you know, maybe 10 people and under typically is your, right. your current client. Right. Okay. So Gary? I know little about your industry in particular, so I'll play the, the I don't know role. <laughs> sure. Uh, when you say there's th that capacity capacity or that cap currently at about 12 getting to the 25 to 30 range what is the cause of the limitation or the the cap there is as we say about hiring versus not hiring what else comes into play about the cap with the sure. users uh, well there's traditionally three different layers to what a, um, a technician possesses in terms of knowledge base uh, you have like your engineer then you have a level two and a level one which would be uh, a newly uh, graduated uh, professional um, with limited experience so a lot of what we do is is prepare them for growth so there's various functions that they're very comfortable with um, and then client client load or bandwidth is is a big part of it so um, the way that we assign projects and and um, management of a client is based off of their need at the moment um, so when when our system recognizes that there's need for service or solution, then we hand it off appropriately. So some projects or some services might require uh, someone with a great deal of experience, whereas others not quite as much. So then we can be confident and comfortable uh, with that relationship being exchanged and that communication exchange. So if we were to add another account that had double the amount of users, then we have to be staffed appropriately, plus have the knowledge base. So Onboarding a client is one thing, but onboarding an employee to understand our systems, our solutions, um, the software you, we use, the hardware we use, that takes time too. So it's just being prepared as best and being able to communicate as best with our clients. Good question. I'm, I'm um, curious, have you defined the scope of what you're delivering with the MSP uh, offering? As far as the packaging? Mm -hmm. so. Yes, um, to a degree. So it's a constantly evolving industry. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, uh, a lot of solutions when it comes to business operations have switched over from a traditional like, server-based system where you'd have to take a physical CD-ROM disk, load in the software, and then it runs off a server to be shared amongst the employees. Nowadays, it's just a login. So cloud-based, um, has shifted to what we do as well, the, to be able to manage um, a client or um, an individual in a business. So with that being said, um, we're, we're trying to evolve it so that it can be the most convenient for both our client as well as our staff. Um, it's, it's trying to define price points where we can remain competitive, but also show value. Um, it's, it's 
uh, creating that area for expansion or um, added projects or works, work where it's defined and it's, it's uh, clear and transparent to the client so that they don't expect and then not receive. Um, so there are challenges with that. But wording is a big part of it um, where we could probably use some help um, and just defining those different areas that we can help out a client. Okay, so Kevin, question for you about um, training. Do you guys have like a formal training program for your technicians or, uh, because I would imagine technology is always changing and uh, you know, uh, getting upgraded and, and so that probably creates a whole new set of challenges. And one is how do you bring new people on sure. and train them, but then how do you keep the other people up to date of all the new things? So yes, you're right. It's, it's constantly evolving and changing. Just with some of the updates that happen overnight with some of our software, there's always something new or a new feature or an add-on. So um, a lot of the software we use has great tutorials or they go through a training video or whatnot to be up to speed as far as that goes. But in terms of new solutions that become available for us and our clients, um, we actually communicate through our, through our inner office means um, on Slack. So you're probably familiar with Slack. Sure. We created all these different channels um, that are defined by different areas of you know, of, of attention. And we have a training channel. So we post, um, we post on there for, um, for, for various YouTube videos um, that are assigned or associated with the manufacturers to be able to go through various uh, updates. Um, I myself, it's just different because being in the sales and marketing and business development role, I don't get as involved when it comes to the training. Um, I do training in a different way. So, um, it's, but I do see that that is brought up quite often. Uh, and every Monday we go through our inner office meeting um, just to discuss all the different entities for the week and, um, and training is a portion of that as well. Okay, good. So, so, yes, yeah, so Kevin, suppose you run across one or two of your larger type of ideal clients today. Mm -hmm. What would staffing need to look like? Who are, the, who, sure. who are these people? What are, they, what are their roles? What, are they, what do they look like? Right, usually our point of contact, it, it's a couple of different people. It's, uh, it's, it could be an owner and operator. Um, it also could be an office manager or it could be an IT assigned individual. Uh, I, I guess what I'm asking is, sure. as, as regards to what you would need to oh. up, update your staff, what, would, sure. what do these people look like? So, um, we recently just added a level one technician graduate um, in IT. Um, he's been with us several months now. He's been doing a great job, uh, and we're we're trying to uh, we're trying to immerse him more into becoming um, more educated, more comfortable operating some of these functions. So when we when we approach a client. Um, regardless of size, we explain what we're capable of uh, right up front. We have three different layers of technicians, uh, depending on the situation and depending on the project and the onboarding, we'll assign you to the various levels. Um, therefore, they know they have a team that they're working with versus an ind individual. Um, what it would take to be able to work with a larger scale client, again, the answer is it depends. It depends on the systems that they're using. Uh, it depends on our comfort uh, with those systems, but a lot of that is, is determined uh, from our first conversation, which would just be a consultation that we sit down, we do uh, what we call a technology audit, and then we figure out whether we're a good fit for, for them or for us. And if it's a little bit over our head, that's where the question comes into play. Is it something that we could take on and we add staff? Uh, do we outsource or do we refer? And it happens across the board. We have referred. We've been referred, and um, and we have added staff. We're just what works best for you right now between those three options. Right now, um, we have taken on a couple of larger clients, and um, and it actually has worked out great because we added that junior level technician a few months ago, and now he's at the comfort level where he can he can uh, be that point of contact initially. And then if he, um, if he runs into challenges, he knows that somebody's got his back. So uh, taking on an additional one or two of those types of accounts 
uh, may require us then to outsource um, some additional staffing or, or to bring someone on and onboard them. So we're at that point right now where do we have that opportunity uh, to add clientele? Um, and where, do we, where are we able to then add on that clientele with, and add that staffing with the, with the confidence that they'll be properly onboarded and confident enough to be able to uh, develop that relationship and that confidence then also uh, bestowed from the client onto the employee. I hope that, yeah, that, that makes sense. That was a bit, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Sorry. Ariel, I know you have a question. I'm, you can see that I'm chomping yeah, yeah. at <laughs> yeah, She's yeah, ready. She's, you can she's feel ready. It. Yeah, well, I can feel it. Right. Yeah, I hope that, yeah, I hope that answered the question. Absolutely. So I'm hearing a lot about the solutions. And as you're talking about being a full service provider, the words that came into my mind were one stop shop. Yeah. Right? Everything that you need, any IT issue, uh, you are full service. And what I'm hearing is that you really want to provide that level of full customer service to your clients. If there's a capacity issue, my question is, as you're doing those consultations and having those conversations, partly with the clients that you have now and partly is if you scale up and take those bigger clients, what is the number one problem that you're seeing your clients have that you can solve? Perhaps it's mm -hmm. not capacity for everything, but what's the number one problem you're seeing? Well, typically uh, it's consolidation, it's efficiency. Um, what we notice in a lot of cases is going from a traditional IT setup to a cloud-based or a new way of doing things. Um, and it, it's been around a few years now, but more and more clients are starting to understand that their equipment is aging and it's very expensive to maintain, it's very expensive to replace. And if something does go wrong mechanically, it can, you can run into a lot of problems very quickly. Um, Sourcing equipment can be a challenge, and during COVID, it was uh, during the shutdowns, equipment was very difficult to, re to order, to procure, and to receive. Uh, as we know, during the holidays, uh, I was sweating a couple of times when I had ordered packages from Amazon, and it was the 20th of December, and I hadn't received them yet, and I had ordered them a month prior. So we run into that, we run into that challenge. Um, but with cloud-based systems, as long as you have adequate uh, personal devices, you can really access it from anywhere at any time. So convenience, but a lot of that comes also with cost savings. Consolidation of, of certain packages uh, can be eye-opening. Uh, in the telecom world, we had switched a, uh, a small private practice, a medical office, from one solution to another, and ended up saving them $600 a month just instantly. That's and awesome. even yeah. for, for a physician, that's a significant amount of money. Absolutely. Um, it's just one of those things where we walk into a lot of solutions that are oversold on a lot of things, whether that's equipment or it's software. Uh, so we want to be honest, transparent, and we want to be solutions-based, needs-based. Kevin, I've got a question for you around um, the outsourcing that you've talked mm -hmm. about. Are these other companies or contractors, independent freelancers? Uh, it's kind of all of the above. Okay. So we, we have worked with, um, with other general contractors on various projects. So electricians uh, come in very handy. We, we network and refer uh, a lot of work to them. Uh, we also work with um, a couple of individuals in the low voltage world. Uh, so if projects are a little bit large um, for installation, we can rely on them. Uh, when it comes to um, actual IT solutions, uh, we do have a network of contacts that we can reach out to if, um, if we run into a stumble or a challenge. And the, the IT world is, is actually, um, it's actually a group of collaborators, um, Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups. You can bounce ideas off of each other. Um, you can grow relationships, whether it's from near or far. Um, you know, social media has done wonders for all of us, I imagine, and for us specifically, you can ask somebody that's in Orlando about a problem with a surveillance camera, and they'll, sure. they'll answer it right back. With the independent engineers, is there anyone that you have a relationship with that you would love to see on your team one day? Uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, we, we try to respect um, other, other companies and what they do. Um, we don't actively pursue, um, and we haven't really had a need to. 
the, um, the rate at which people are involved in this industry has increased exponentially. So uh, it's usually in the best interest of the individual to seek out that best opportunity. So for example, when we were looking for installers, um, we received dozens and dozens of applications, uh, traditionally from um, kind of all walks of life, but technology-based companies, um, which can be really helpful. Uh, whether they're familiar or not with our systems and our solutions, that's where the training comes in, but usually it's eye-opening for them to see, oh, I, I don't just have to work in this one area. I can expand my knowledge base, and hopefully we don't get them to the point where they are comfortable enough to leave us. <laughs> you know, we want to keep them interested, we want to keep them excited, but we also want to be able to um, retain ourselves. Um, we haven't really had to, um, to go the route of, of reaching out to other um, to other people that we've hired on. Okay. Um, I got a, a quick question, then we'll kind of start to shift gears. But um, if, if you're envisioning growing, how do you envision that the tech's involvement? Because like, I think right now the way you're set up, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, you guys are set up where like you'll have the tech come in and help at the office or whatever. Uh, but going forward, if you have like larger clients, um, do you envision having a different setup, like maybe where there's you know, a customer service manager, mm. and then, uh, you know, I think those are the things that you got to start to kind of think about, but uh, yeah. how, do, how do you envision that right? That, you know, that's a great point. Um, we, we've always had kind of a, an aspiration. Uh, we've had a mission where we can be large enough to be accessible uh, for, uh, for walk-in type business. Um, one thing I should explain is, you know, we work remotely. It's, it's ultra convenient for our employees. Uh, so when people started working from home due to the pandemic, um, that was natural for us already. So we didn't have to make these, um, these 180 moves um, to be able to uh, still main, maintain productive, uh, productivity and to be able to uh, have reach for our customers. Because we are, um, we're remote and we're off, or home office based, we can reach our, our customers in a much more convenient manner However, uh, the goal is someday to be able to have that entity because as we grow, um, we're going to need that space. Um, we're running out of space in terms of storage because as we take on some larger projects, uh, garages tend to be <laughs> a little bit of a challenge and we want to be able to figure out a way that we can um, keep, keep the materials and the merchandise um, in a secure manner. Um, and in a lot of our, in a lot of our clients, there's a, there's a lot of foot traffic, so we want to make sure that it's secure. So, um, so yeah, expansion is, is definitely a goal, and hopefully we can grow to the point where we have that, where we have that revenue stream where we can have no problem signing off and, and growing ourselves physically. Okay. Um, so we're going to pivot now and go back to the, um, the question at hand that you had for us and uh, give you guys some advice. So you want to basically learn how to scale up your, your company uh, and, and kind of build a plan basically as far as how, how you, you build the team uh, you know, around it and whether you should have the team in place first or outsource uh, and, and that kind of thing. So how, what's the best way basically to scale up without you know, um, sacrificing your quality and your brand of your company at the end of the day? Right. So uh, who wants to jump in with some advice for Kevin? Uh, I'm happy Laura, to go for sure. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so I, I think you have a fairly clearly defined goal and objective that you're trying to achieve, which is great. But building out that roadmap with some defined milestones that says, once we hit this, then this is what happens next. And, and you're looking at a number of things as far as, you know, is it um, AGI per FTE? You know, you want to make sure you're still profitable as you're scaling or you're not adding on team members. You're paying them to not do work. Can, can you explain that a little more? Because the acronyms. A AGI is adjusted gross income. So that's your, your total sales minus um, your cost of goods sold. Mm -hmm. And that's really where you're going to get your profit from. And then FTE is full time employee. So you should have a defined number in, internally that says, you know, hundred thousand dollars you know worth of AGI per FTE and, and and have or a range to work in and that gives you an idea of when you should be adding new team members on um, but having that map that says at this point it's time to add someone on and then having a clearly defined career path for these various engineers so if you your your level one I must if I'm correct is the kind of the, the greenest employee is that Correct. Okay? 
So mapping out and saying they have to hit these specific tasks in order to move to a level two. So they know what they have to do to grow, um, but everyone's on the same page then. That's great advice. That was fantastic. I don't want to follow it. <laughs> I, mean, you know, I will. We're, I, I, I we're will. done here. Um, mine was a little similar without all the alphabet soup sure. that Lori had going on. Thank you. Uh, but a couple, a couple of analogies come to mind. Um, first one is kind of the fishbowl effect, right? You're, if you have a, a, a fish that's supposed to grow to be five feet, but you put them in a two foot fishbowl, guess what's going to happen? It's going to be limited right. in, in, in its growth. Mm -hmm. um, and then piggybacking off of that is build it and they will come. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think about what you need to do in order to be able to scale. And I, wanna, I want you to think about laddering your growth, not just saying, hey, we need to go from you know, kind of a 10 to 12 users to a 30, or 25 to 30 users overnight but maybe going from 10 to 12 to 12 to 15, and then from 15 to 18, and kind of laddering that growth so that you can get comfortable with it. Um, and then that, that, that's going to kind of eliminate the fishbowl effect. Um, and then the, the other thing is I was thinking about a good way for you to, uh, I'm just full of analogies right now. <laughs> good way for you to build your I bullpen is. Bullpens <laughs> and fishbowls, who would have thought? Fishbowls and computers. And they will come and then you need a bullpen. And there's, a, there's an organization uh, that trains IT people called IC Stars. Okay. Um, and tap into them and, and, and get it. These are, are people who are looking to kind of some of these level one type of positions that you're looking at. This is a great way for you to build that, that bullpen. You can you know, bring them on as, as uh, interns. You can and train them in your way. You can bring them on as employees. A great opportunity to kind of build that, that infrastructure that you need as you continue to grow. Are you going to follow that one? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the training piece, I think, is key and part of that plan of what are we going to do next when we hire the next person. Lori did a fantastic job of saying about the financial piece. I think from the marketing standpoint or how to think about the new client and then the new employee is I'm hearing a one-stop shop, all service, you know, and you mentioned a lot of different industries. I'm hearing you've done a great job of being all things to all people in a way, being able to provide this full service. The challenge is as you grow, that's going to be a challenge because you want to go, if you want to say double your users and you're trying to provide all of this service to all of those people, that's a lot to take on and it creates a bigger gap between you know, taking that person on and hiring that employee versus what is the number one problem you solve and that can get you into the door to your ideal customer. You may not be able to do full service for them based upon your limited capacity, but if you get your foot in the door, then you create the new opportunity and you bring on the new person. And so it's a, we're at least gonna be able to provide this level of service. We can provide all technically, but you build the capacity as you build or, your client Or you can subcontract out exactly, for that other piece. you already piece. have those referrals and those sources. So get your foot in the door with those clients. That'll open up the opportunities to bring in the revenue to bring on the new client or to bring on the new employees, so on and so forth. But uh, you don't want to limit yourself from those client interactions because you feel a constraint on capacity. Yeah, being full service, it, it can be a blessing and a curse. Yes. Yep. Um, as we all yeah, know. Kind of master of none, right? Right, yeah. right. Yep, exactly. Um, but that's a good point. And so you kind of brought on the financial piece and you got the marketing piece. I'm going to kind of bring on the HR piece now. And what I'd like you to think about is. You know, do you guys have an org chart right now? Um, and then what sometimes helps is to create an org chart for your ideal company. So where you want to get to creating that org chart and making the spaces for, hey, I'm going to have you know six engineers and I'm going to have a customer service manager and I'm going to have you know an accounting person. I'm going to have you know three salespeople. Just build it out like what you you think the perfect IT company would be that you want to get to. And then you might have to, like Mervyn said, you know, make the ladder and have, you know, okay, what's, what's the next logical step? Where do we start to fill in these pieces? So that way you kind of know when you're going to need to fill things in to have the financial piece. Like Lori said, okay, we've got the revenue to do this, and this would be the next piece I add. Okay, now I add more revenue, this is the next piece I add. So that, that would be kind of how I would approach it from the, the HR side. That's a great point. Always be prepared. We'll use another one of those analogies. There you go. We're <laughs> full of them today. Right. What other advice do you guys have? Anything else for Kevin? I think these were a lot of significant pieces, and as you put it together, they certainly overlap. So the 
one, it's kind of the, the chicken and the egg question, right? The revenue versus the, the client versus the capacity. And I think as you kind of put these pieces together, there's a sweet spot in which you can add as you grow, but being intentional about how you grow and what you do in each step as we're talking about the plan, the financial piece, the HR piece, the marketing piece. Um, but my encouragement is to not let your fear of capacity limit you, but plant the seed and let it grow as you grow. You, you mentioned about the foot in the door. So there are solutions that we can absolutely help out immediately just for cost savings measure, um, which then if, the, if it's appropriate and they approach us, we could either say yes or no. Right. It's great to be able to say no to a client, it is. isn't it? It's like <laughs> yes, the best exactly. feeling in the world. That means you know what you're doing, actually. Yes. That's right. a good sign. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, no, that, that's fantastic. I mean, we never really looked at it from that high level of, of um, segmentation. So yeah, and I think the other awesome. thing kind of to tack on to what Ariel just said is that you know you can you can help them with you know maybe part of their solution early on, but if they've turned into a very good customer of yours and you know you've got a relationship, you know they pay you on time and they're consistently using you guys, you know, you can then always approach them and say, hey, you know, we're thinking of offering XYZ. Um, is that something you would need? Well yeah, that would be perfect. Well, you know, you can kind of almost make an agreement with them or you could you know, get, go under contract with them and say, well, we'll offer that service to you. And then you've already got kind of a guaranteed customer that you know knows you, likes you, and trusts you. And now you can continue to build your operations, uh, you know, assuming you keep that relationship you know, good going forward. So that might be another way to do it too, where again, you use that foot in the door thing, but then you kind of build upon it and use your best customers to help you, you know, scale up. That's very true. We do, we do uh, a lot of referral work so um, we need to keep that relationship very strong. And our technicians have actually been very comfortable growing those relationships with them. So uh, relying on them to be able to then um, seek out opportunities, that's, that's something that we're, we're actively doing and um, gets our foot in the door. Okay, good. Any final thoughts for Kevin? Yeah, absolutely. I need to say some marketing things. Yes, <laughs> yes. I know. I, know. I can see no, the steam <laughs> coming out of yours. I was, I was hoping to hear that. Yeah. It's so you talked about having some good history in the healthcare space, and and I, you know, the statement: "There's riches in the niches." If you go deep into a vertical, um, you can still be full service because your expertise is in that industry. Instead mm. of again trying to be everything to everybody. Um, so either picking a, a strength from an offering side or an industry st side is going to be powerful to help you scale. Fantastic. Yeah. I love yeah, all the feedback. Well. I love so all the, 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 the words we're using today. Financial <laughs> guy. I may as well throw in some financial things. You kind of, for, the, for your clients, I mean, I, I, I think about how expensive it is to purchase right, all this equipment. Have you thought about partnering with someone that can do the leasing for them so that they can be a lot more cost effective for them and you can probably get a lot more business that way. Right, uh, actually we have. We, we added that as a solution last year. Um, so we now give uh, an option for a client to be able to buy outright or to lease on a monthly basis. Um, the nice thing about the lease, as you know, even with vehicles, it comes with a great warranty. So. Um, you're not really down and out for extended periods of time. Equipment is just overnighted. So, uh, and we even try and keep something spare on hand in case of a pinch. So uh, beyond, beyond that, uh, a number of our clients keep backups um, of laptops and desktops and, and whatnot, uh, which we always advise them to do. But the, um, but the leasing is, is a growing marketplace and we have taken advantage of it. Good stuff. I just One want last to say, question. I condensed yep. a quote from what you said that I'm that I love. So okay, there we go. Let's hear it. Share. Use your best customers to scale rather than trying to scale for your best customers. Mm. Ooh, I like it. That was, that we was got you. tons <laughs> of takeaways. <laughs> <laughs> We got tons of great takeaways here. So Kevin, you know, we've thrown a lot of advice at you already, a lot of different things coming from different angles. What do you think was your biggest takeaway from, from uh, what we gave you so far? I, I mean, everything actually has been amazing. Um, it's, uh, it's been eye-opening to hear all the different aspects that go into the scaling. So um, whether it's the HR, the, to your point, uh, marketing, uh, I, that's, a, that's a constant challenge because we have to be able to go to market with this. So, not only do we have to come up with the packaging, 
we have to come up with the, um, the financial side of it. Uh, then we have to allocate it appropriately within the, the team. Then we have to outsource if needed. So all of that that you've touched on is, um, has been fantastic and amazing. And um, I'm really excited to be able to talk about it with the team and see what, um, what we can tackle first and how we can go to market with this and how efficiently we can go to the market yeah. without, without confusing ourselves as well as our clients. So. <laughs> sure. Well, and, you know, you've got a lot of ideas. You just remember that you know, you've just got to take it one bite at a time. But you guys got a great business. You know, you've, you've helped a lot of companies. And you know, you're on the right track. So it's just you know, taking the time to, to kind of plan everything out and, uh, and work through it. And uh, you've got lots of different options. So don't let, you know, uh, I guess what I'd like to end with is don't let you know, a concern over one thing limit you from, from growing. Because there's always a solution. There's always a different route that you can take to get to where you want to go. That's how we approach things. So. Fantastic. No, thank you. Well, thank you, Kevin, um, and, and uh, good luck to you and Bruce City PC in the future. Thanks for being on YG Workshop. I appreciate it. Really do. Thank you. Thanks to Kevin for sitting down on YG Workshop, presented by First Federal Bank and sponsored by Circle Electric and Health Payment Systems. YG Workshop is a collaborative environment designed to help businesses see their blind spots, consider new perspectives, and grow toward their goals. Do you know an entrepreneur that would like to come on the show? Have them visit younggunsmovement.com and apply. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our podcast so that you don't miss a single episode of YGTV. I'm your host, David Bellman, president of Bellman Homes. Thanks to our panel, Lori, Ariel, and Mervyn, as well as our guest, Kevin Redlick. See you next time.